Mic check one, two, one, two. But we love. Hey y'all. It's your girl Ray. Back with another episode as come as you are. Y'all. Today is a good day. Um today is a great day actually. I'm on here today to spread the good news spread to y'all the word that's laying on my heart and before we start i'm just going to usher in the spirit of the living god heavenly father we just thank you so much for this day we thank you for this time and we thank you for this opportunity right now i just ask that you speak through me and you speak to me in order to speak to your people father god use me as the vessel the vessel the voice um, and the instrument that you have called and created me to be. Father God, let the words that you want to be spoken to your people to change lives, to save souls, and to bring your children back home. Let them be spoken, let them be resonated, um, and let them pierce the hearts of those that have the ears to listen, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right, y'all, watch my back. <laughs> I'm back in the car, so I need y'all to watch my back. It's somebody, it's people walking around here. Um, y'all know how Philly could be sometimes. Um, anyway, what's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, message for the day that's been laying on my heart. Oh, and God has been hitting me over the head with it, y'all. So I'm gonna hit y'all over the head with it. Um, he started me out in John 5, 5 this morning, um, where there was a lame, meaning there was a cripple, a person that had a physical disability for 38 years and he wasn't able to get in the pool. The pool was symbolic of a lot of individuals that was lame back then to, uh, get healing once the irritation or the regurgitation they thought it was symbolic for an angel coming down and causing healing oh my god it's this cute little dog okay larry focus um so he wasn't able to get into the pool like the rest of the individuals he seen his circumstance as uh he seen himself as stuck he was unable to walk for 38 years. Now I'm just giving you guys context because sometimes the context is bigger than the word. Like if you ever find yourself reading the word and you find yourself stuck on reading the word or unable to decipher or have a deeper understanding, oh God, that's so cute, a deeper understanding of the word, um, try to get context and um, one way to get context is by getting a Bible or a resource that gives context that just tells you about what's going on during the time, who this scripture is about, or who is this, who the chapter is focused on, who wrote the chapter, what's going on in the day and age. And then that helps to give a little bit of context and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what's really going on or help you get the message that he wants you to get because sometimes the message that he'll give me in a text will be something completely different he gives someone else in a text um depending on where we are in our walk depending on where we are in our season of life and depending on our purpose and calling in our life okay so just giving you guys a little bit of context so i was reading out of john 5 5 like it just um laid on my spirit to go over that word do you want to be made well and um it's something about when jesus asked him do you want to be made well that i was forced to then ask myself you know i'm complaining about this or i'm crying about this and i'm, I'm fasting about this and I'm, I'm uh praying and asking you to change this and just things in my area in my life that I wanted healing for that I felt God wasn't moving quick enough with um when I discovered that chapter when when I discovered that chapter and I really asked myself do I want to be made whole do I really want to be healed it forced me to 
you know, just be real with myself and say, okay, so why, why aren't I? And when I started asking myself that, it was because I was still choosing to do the same things that was making me sick. Let me turn the air off. I don't know if y'all can hear that. So I was still choosing to do the things that was making me sick, begging and pleading and asking God, please deliver me from this. But I was still consciously choosing to do the things that was making me sick. So all in all, in a nutshell, I was confessing with my mouth, yes, I want to be made whole, but I was still doing things that wasn't pointing me in the direction that was going to sustain me being whole, that wasn't going to promote or create or cultivate an, an, an environment or um, a circumstance or a surrounding that cultivates and nurtures my healing so did I really want to be made whole did I I had to really get real with myself like sometimes I could get real with myself and you know say yes God I don't necessarily have the desire you want me to have um but work on my heart that's that's getting real that's getting real but Asking myself, do I want to be made whole was the key that unlocked a lot of things that I still didn't want to throw away. Like I still had some things in my black closet that I just simply didn't want to throw away. I wanted to take with me. And I wonder how many people, you know, listening to this message, you know, is praying and asking God for different deliverance, um, saving or a change of heart or you are repenting, but you're not willing to throw away or you're hiding what you're willing to throw away. That's what I was doing. I was hiding. I was hiding some things that I was willing to throw away. I'm like, you want me to like do something I'm not really ready for. I wasn't ready to throw it away. I wasn't ready to actually let go. But here I am begging and pleading, asking you to help me let this go. So that was I started asking myself that back in May. And once I started asking myself that repeatedly, because this is a process, y'all, like, you know, this is a journey and, you know, some things, you know, happen more instantly. Some things are easier for us to throw away. Some things are more, um, we're more aware of the things that we need to throw away. But sometimes there are some deeply seated, rooted, things that we might have picked up in childhood that Christ is asking us to throw away and that can come in the form of our decision like our patterns for how we make decisions our thought process um these are what you know the the word talks about strongholds um or religiously we talk about strongholds where it's a thought pattern or a thought process that keep us bound to bondage of whatever sort whatever whatever your bondage is that there are thought processes that are in the way of our healing and not to say that god can't work the miraculous like god delivered the children of israel from egypt he delivered them out of their bondage but he couldn't deliver Egypt out of them because their thought process was still stuck on their bondage. Whatever they picked up in Egypt, they still manifested in the wilderness. And it kept them out of the promise. It kept them from what God had for them. And if you find yourself... Um, 
going in circles if you're finding yourself confused if you find yourself clouded or you don't have much clarity just a few things that god has been blessing me with i'm just gonna start spitting it at you and spitting it at y'all because it's like people need real real healing people need real deliverance and like this ain't no joke like this stuff ain't no joke like i i get on here and i talk for a few minutes probably once a month i should do it more often but like this is me talking to y'all but i'm in god face multiple times a day like i'm having these conversations with god multiple times a day and because i want to be made whole because I'm tired of me and I had to get to a point where I was tired of me. I had to get fed up with me and I'm fed up with me. I'm fed up with the way I've been thinking, the way I've been choosing, the way I've been, you know, living. I may not be as worse off as I used to be, but I know I ain't where God wants me just yet, what he created me for. And that's really what this journey and this walk is about y'all it's about you know stripping off those things that we might have put on or that somebody else might have put on us because these these things are generational like the things we believe our thought processes and our systems and how we uh interpret and how we perceive the world around us these are generational things the people who raised us, our caregivers, our parents, those that was around us, the experiences we have experienced, like those things um, were put on us and we put and we picked up. And the beauty of Christ, y'all, the beauty of God, the beauty of Christ is that we are free to put those things down. We are free to lay those things down. And I have never felt so light in my life. I carry around <laughs> uh, a picture of me. I don't know how old I was in this picture. Um, all my, a lot of my, my, my baby pictures, my little girl pictures, I was cheesing. Like I was always this joyful giddy bubbly little girl and i'm like this helps me heal because i want to get back to just that organic joy irregardless of the circumstance you don't know what was probably going on with me at this what was going on in my home what was going on in my life but the, the joy that was always in my heart that I've known since I was a little girl, I'm coming back to because irregardless of the circumstances or situations or the experiences or even my upbringing, um, I deserve to, I don't even know if deserve is the right word, but I desire to have everything that God has for me. If he created me that way, he wants that for me. And I'm I'm doing what I can to to reach that, to get to get back to that, to get back to that mindset of you know, I don't have to worry about x y and z. So, back to my um my scripture that I was meditating on this morning. Um, ask yourself, do you want to be made whole? Ask yourself, do you want to be made whole? Um, and if so, what's stopping you? I was stopping me in a lot of different ways. And it, it didn't, it's not, it, it wasn't an overnight process. It's still not an overnight process, but me being conscious enough to make the to to ask myself me being brave enough to be honest enough with my answers and me being willing enough 
to see what's on the other side. I had to start making choices that were different from the ones I was making. I feel like that was the hardest step. The hardest step was me actually saying, okay, this is what I know. This is what I think. This is how I feel. This is this like me actually seeing the pattern unfold and me actually seeing my thought process in real time <clears throat> and saying, I'm going to do the opposite because I know where that's where that leads me. I know where that's going to lead me. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm suffering with this pain. Why can't I let this pain go? God is because, oh, I'm choosing not to let go of this in my mind. I'm choosing to still hold on to it. And I think that's what it did for that guy. And then two, Jesus told him, he said, take your bed up and walk. Take your bed up and walk. And with that, to me, with the spirit of speaking to me, what that is, is come alive. Like he's speaking to those, those dead parts of him that he, he counted out, that he thought was dead. Jesus says, come alive. Take up what you have, what you've been using. Pick this, get it up, remove it and walk and follow and that was the shift that he needed that was the life that he needed he y'all think about this he was laying there for 38 years or he was he he couldn't walk for 38 years so he's laying on this bed for 38 years how long have you been laying on your bed Whatever your bed may be, because we all got some beds. We all got some beds that we've grown comfortable in, that we've looked at as we've settled for because it's our circumstance. Like, how long have you been laying in your bed? What is your bed? Like, start to think about that too. What is, what is your bed? Or what? what is composed of your bed because sometimes your bed may not be one thing sometimes your bed may be um a compository of more than one thing so with that start to start to reflect and ponder on what your bed is and God saying, okay, take what you have and follow. Get up. I can make you healed. I can make you whole. But I can't make you walk. I could take you out of Egypt. I could deliver you from whatever, but I can't make you walk. I can't make you follow. There's a part that we have to play in this deliverance. And I just thank God for his patience, for his loving kindness, his mercy, towards all of us because every day there's a new day every day the sun comes up or every day there is a new day mercies are new mercies are new his loving kindness is new and i just pray this blesses someone because it blessed me today and he sent me confirmation like through the airway that's how much God loves us the same exact scripture I meditated on this morning was on somebody was prop um speaking prophecy over and talking about on the radio the same exact one today like God is so real it's not even funny like God is so loving it's not even funny like he did that for me 
because he know I needed, I needed that. I needed that and it don't feel good. Like it don't, I'm not gonna say it don't feel good, but the broken part of me doesn't like the conversion. That's what I mean by I don't feel good, but the whole part of me, my soul knoweth right well, like my soul rejoices. The broken parts of me does don't want to be fixed. Can we talk about that? How it's not going to feel good because the broken parts don't want to be fixed. So every time it gets hard or it hurts, we go back. I go back. Or I want to go back. Or I get stuck. No, take your bed up and walk. Forward thinking, y'all. Forward thinking. No more backwards thinking. <laughs> I know that's not biblical, but no more backwards thinking. Forward thinking. No, we can we can relate that to scripture. Um Paul talks about forgetting what is behind you. Forward thinking. Do you want to be made whole? The doctors may not ask you. Your friends may not ask you. Your preachers, your pastors may not ask you. Your parents may not ask you. Your girl, your woman, your wife, your, your husband, your hubby, your lover, whoever. They may not ask you. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, they may be um, getting some great use off of your brokenness. You know, that's not to say it's their fault. It's just what it is. Brokenness attracts abuse, so when you don't know what the purpose is for, it clouds your judgment. So, do you wanna be made whole? The world may not ask you, but Jesus is asking you, do you wanna be made whole? All right. And if so, Take your bed up and walk. Jesus knew he ain't walking 38 years. Can you imagine what it's like? Okay, I'm a therapist, right? Your muscles atrophy after a few weeks of no activity, right? So let's, 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 come on, scientifically, let's think about this, right? For, this is the beauty and the, like, the miracle of Christ can you imagine how brittle his bones may have been? Could How could he physically walk? How could you physically walk after not walking for 38 years? Your muscles is atrophy. Your joints are contractured. Like you, you're not moving. I don't know if you're moving. So I don't know if contractures is really what's going on here. But if we're thinking about it in... In real time, God is amazing. God is amazing. And there's nothing he won't do to show you how much he loves you. That's another thing. Like I had to really start believing how much God loves me. And I want to challenge you guys to, you know, think the same Start thinking in the same way. Start thinking in the same manner. Ch start challenging yourself on how much God really loves you. Because that allowed me to start trusting God on a whole nother level. Like it enhanced my territory of trust for God. And like I said, it still 
feels wrong. It still feels not wrong, opposing to what I naturally innately want to do. But just having a bigger platform of trust for God just allows God to come in and do the miraculous in areas where I've been atrophied, in areas where I'm 33, so in areas that have atrophied while I laid on my mat since I was a kid, since I was born, since whatever, since the enemy took the truth from my mind. He wants to bring us back. He wants to bring us home. So I wanted to share that with y'all. If there's anything else, Holy Spirit, you want me to speak to your people, your servant is listening. Open their eyes so that they may see that there are more with us than there are with them. Them being the enemy. All right. If you want to accept Christ, you can say the simple prayer, Lord. I recognize you as the Savior. I ask that you come into my heart, you come into my life and change my mind. You change my heart about the way I've been thinking. I believe you sent your son to die on the cross for us and you rose again. I believe you are the way, the truth and the light. And I believe that no one gets to the Father but through the Son. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, 27 minutes. I don't care how long this is. I just, I just wanted to do it. I hope y'all having a blessed day. Um, Getting after these, I always say getting after these goals, but getting after your purpose, getting after these assignments, getting after these missions, getting after you like the real you not the you that came because trauma happened or because pain happened like the real you i hope you are getting after you and allowing god to usher in all that he has predestined and planned for you all right i love y'all have a beautiful day. Have a prosperous day. I'll talk to y'all soon.